Previously on Design Dungeon. On the visual side, she looks like a white-faced clown in a red suit. Oh, uh, by the way, are you gonna do Hell of a Bob too? God damn it, why are there so many? Hell of a Boss is a workplace comedy that was created by Vivzipop alongside Haspin Hotel. Since we're hot off the heels of my review of that show, we might as well talk about this one as well. Before we really get into the characters of the show, its tone and aim should be compared to its parent series Haspin Hotel, because they are indeed part of a shared universe. Where Haspin is a series that wants to tell a story of dreams and redemption, character arcs intrigue and a full-length show duration, Hell of a Boss is the complete opposite. It is a rapid-fire comedy centered around the dysfunctional assassination company called Imp, otherwise known as Immediate Murder Professionals, which is fittingly run by three imps and a hellhound. That's right, these are native-born demons. There are no mortal souls in this company, Another contrast to Haspin Hotel, which has a cast primarily composed of dead sinners. Speaking of the cast, let's start with the titular boss himself, Blitz. Yo, silent. While all the imps share a similar color palette, Blitz is rather interesting as it has to do with his overall visual design. He is in many ways a jester. He irritates his subordinates with his antics and humbles them with his mockery. This is the purpose of a jester, to openly mock their king. He even has something of this towards Stolas, who is the company's benefactor? Patron? Hard to exactly explain that relationship, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, because it is quite the bridge to cross. Though what really interests me are those posters and pictures found around the meeting room and in his office, specifically the ones hinting at his past as possibly a circus clown. I don't know if there are, will be any character arcs in this show, but either way, he's a solid lead that plays off the cast very well. Awesome! Moxie is the weapon specialist of Imp. His visual design is more in line with what one would expect an Imp to look like. Horns? Check. Cloven hooves? Check. Spade tail? Check. Sniper rifle? Check. Of course, this reflects his role as the straight man to Blitz's wise guy. The dialogue between them is quite fraught with tension between them, as they can barely stand each other, and it's quite entertaining just seeing them go back and forth between each other. The only member of Imp that respects him is his wife Millie, but we'll get to her next. The only thing I can really add to him is that Richard Horvitz was an excellent pick for the voice. What's funny, honey? Really impressive wordplay. What the? Why are you in our fridge? All right. Millie is the bruiser of Imp and Moxie's spouse. Visually, she has a tomboy look with ripped black overalls and short hair. Perhaps this reflects her dynamic with Moxie. She is the one who comforts and supports the more neurotic, uh, Moxie. That said, I don't think we get all that much from her. I mean, she's adorably in love with Moxie, but I wish there was just a bit more to her. Hasbin really has spoiled me. Brutal. Luna is the snarky receptionist of IMP. She's got a punk slash goth look written all over her design, and boy does she have the abrasive personality to match. I think the only one at Imp that tolerates her is Blitz, and that's because he adopted her. While she may be horrible to her co-workers, she has got to be the second best source of jokes, just under Blitz, of course. He's a very solid character, and if this show does get into character arcs, I'd definitely like to see her improve towards the rest of her co-workers. Brutal. Stolas is actually a demon from the Ars Goetia, a demon prince of hell, if you will. They kept some of the core design concepts from the Goetia and added to it, mainly with arms and proper clothing. 
They changed the crown to a top hat with a crown-like decoration, and of course there is his royal cape. The goal was to make him look ostentatious and consider it a success. Stolas himself is somewhat of a one-scene wonder. He's part of a hilarious phone call skit, the entirety of which must be seen and heard in the original pilot to fully appreciate the context of the skit, because it is a monster of a joke that was factored into the ranks of all characters involved. So what does this one scene actually tell us about Stolas? First, that he's a well-connected aristocrat that maintains contact with the mortal world, and that he is incredibly thirsty for blitz. When an adult show has to break out the censor bleeps, you know the character has gone off the deep end and right into crazy. It should also be noted that he was the original owner of the tome that Imp uses to reach the mortal world. While these are interesting pieces of information that could have ramifications later on, or perhaps not, given the tone of the series, despite the short time, Stolas has nearly stolen the show for me. Almighty! Overall, I find Hell of a Boss to be an entertaining spin-off, though I wonder how well it can last in the long run. Will these characters remain static and eventually run stale like so many episodic shows before it? Perhaps instead, they too will grow and develop their characters over time. Or perhaps they will be able to give some insight into how the Hellverse works. The characters are fine and well-constructed, but I just don't know how much of them I can take. Could I handle a season of them? Probably. But three? Five? I'm not so sure. To me, a show needs something to keep people coming back to it. Hasbin has it easy for their central driving question, supported with the potential of character development. Although a boss has a far more challenging hook, humor. While many may think comedy is the safe bet for an animated series, it is only good in the short term. Few have lived long enough to become stale, and very few, if any, have remained very fresh in their humor. <laughs>